In this lecture, we will look at some of Michel Foucault's ideas about power and about the link he finds between power and science. We will see that Foucault gives us a new way of thinking about power, a way which allows us to find power in places where we would have never expected to find it before, including in the university and in scientific knowledge itself. To understand Foucault's thinking, we will make a distinction between, between two kinds of power, repressive power and normalizing power. To think of power in terms of repression is the traditional way of thinking. Against that, Foucault suggests that most power, and indeed the most important kind of power in our modern society, doesn't repress at all. It works in a far subtler, less visible way. This power is what Foucault calls normalizing power. But let's start on the repressive side. When we think of someone who is exercising power, some of the images that may come up in our minds are these. A judge ordering a criminal to be locked up for 20 years. A country using its superior military to conquer another country. An angry boss telling his employee to do as he's told or get fired. And so on. When we think of power, we tend to think of violence, whether physical or mental, whether actual or only threatened. This is the idea of power as repression. You want to do one thing, but someone else uses their power to force you to do their bidding instead. Now, such power is undeniably effective, but there is also a sense in which in each of these cases, the need to apply power implies a failure. The state only has to lock up criminals if its laws have been broken. The bigger country only needs to go to the trouble of invading the smaller country if it has failed in other ways to make the smaller country do what it wants. And a boss who has to threaten his employees is not really in control. A boss who is really in control is obeyed without the need for threats. Repressive power then, while no doubt the most visible form of power, is also a kind of second rate. If you were really powerful, you wouldn't need to use it. Our lives are shaped by repressive power, or by the threat of repressive power, only on rare occasions. For instance, take stealing. Only a few of us actually go to jail for stealing. And what's more, it's not the case that the rest of us are motivated not to steal because we are afraid of going to jail, because of the threat of jail. We don't walk through the supermarket with the desire to steal things held in check only by our fear of the police. No, we don't even think about stealing. If we think about it, we don't consider it seriously. We don't want to steal. If we find someone's wallet on the street with 100 euros in it, we'll give it back to the owner with all the money still in it. That's the kind of people we are. And that is where Foucault's idea of normalizing power comes in. Repressive power forces us to do what we don't want to do. Normalizing power, on the other hand, makes us want to do what we have to do anyway. It turns us into people who automatically, by their own will, do what society wishes them to do. If our parents, our schools and so on have been successful at teaching us not to steal, we are now the kind of people I just described. People who can't even imagine themselves stealing anything. If they have been successful at teaching you the value of education and diplomas, then you are now the kind of student who is motivated to learn well for your university courses and to get a degree in four years. Of course, while you are students, society allows you to do some stupid things like drinking too much beer, smoking pot, failing a course now and then. But society can afford to, because it knows that when you have finished your degree, you will be not just ready, but eager to join the workforce, make yourself useful, pay taxes, not break the law, and in general, just be an upright, normal citizen. Normal. That's the key word here. Normalizing power is power that determines what we see as normal. It constructs our view of the world and of ourselves. In that way, it shapes our beliefs, our desires and our decisions. 
while at the same time giving us the idea that these are our own beliefs, desires and decisions, that nobody has forced them upon us. And in a sense that's true. Even though our lives have been shaped in countless ways by the normalizing power of society, well, they're still our lives. Foucault is extremely skeptical of the idea that there is some true you hiding underneath what society has made of you. Without society you wouldn't be a person at all. All of us always are and always will be normalized to a very large extent. I said before that repressive power is in a sense second rate. If you need to use force or threats to get people to do what you want, you're already solving a problem that ideally would never have arisen. Ideally people would do what you want without threats. They would do what you want simply because they consider that the right thing to do. This of course is precisely what normalizing power accomplishes. Normalizing power is really first rate power. The power that ensures that you and I don't have to be jailed because we wouldn't steal anyway. The power that ensures that we do what our boss tells us because we believe in hierarchy and perhaps desire to climb in that hierarchy and be bosses ourselves one future day. Foucault goes on to point out that while repressive power is often focused in very specific institutions and individuals, the police force, the army, the judge, the bosses, the politicians, normalizing power on the other hand is everywhere. The family is a source of normalizing power and so is the school, the university, the hospital, the psychiatric clinic and even the commercial break on television which tells me that I should desire to smell of musk and ginger. If we want to understand how power works, these are the institutions that we need to analyze and understand. And a large part of Foucault's work is dedicated to doing exactly that. Two important things follow from Foucault's view. First, that power is not something that is wielded by a few powerful people at the expense of others. On Foucault's view, everybody is subjected to power. Society has given the employee an idea of how an employee should behave, but it has also given the boss an idea of how a boss should behave. The boss might have more repressive power than the employee, but both of them are equally subjected to normalizing power. And the same holds for everyone. Nobody is free. Second, it follows that scientific knowledge cannot be divorced from power. For one thing, the institutions which generate and spread scientific knowledge are themselves sources of normalizing power. A university education is turning the student into a person who thinks and acts in certain ways. And by the time you are a working scientist, you will have incorporated an entire way of thinking so deeply that you'll never get rid of it again. But perhaps even more importantly, scientific knowledge itself is an extremely important standard of normalization. Based on science, doctors get to decide whether I am sick or healthy and thus whether it is normal for society to expect me to work for my money. Based on science, psychiatrists get to decide whether my behavior is normal or a sign of mental illness. Based on science, economists get to decide at what age I can stop working. Based on science, Historians get to decide what I am taught about the origins of my society. And so on. Science is not divorced from power. It plays an extremely important role in the social structures that surround us. And those structures are continuously exerting their normalizing power on each of us. So what's the use of knowing all that? Again. Foucault doesn't believe that you can radically break from the ways you have been shaped by society because then there would be nothing left. But he does believe that by becoming aware of all the many ways in which we are subjected to power, we can be a little more autonomous than if we remained in the dark about this and erroneously believed ourselves to be as free as birds.